Oh, hello. Hey folks, Tony Mo here, and today I wanted to sit down and talk about a little game I spent my entire Sunday playing. This is RoboQuest. It's a fast-paced FPS roguelite being developed and published by Rise Up Studios. It's currently available via Steam Early Access. It's actually on sale right now for $16, normal price tag, 20 bucks. It's single player or two player co-op and it absolutely blew me away. It's actually been in early access for just a few months now. It originally uh, launched back in late August. I saw it then, didn't think too much of it. Was excited though to see another game sort of jumping into the FPS, the shooter roguelite genre if you will. It seems like we've had a few of them since the release of Risk of Rain 2. I know it's not strictly an FPS, but I do feel like Risk of Rain 2 has encouraged a lot of these games to come about. Uh, it's obviously possible that many of these have been in development for a while, but it seems like there's some sort of, I won't say resurgence, because I don't feel like we've had a lot of these games in the first place, but there very much seems to be a rise in the idea of taking shooters, first person or otherwise, and plugging them into some form of a roguelite experience. We saw it with Gunfire, which I think is a really cool game. And we're seeing it here again with RoboQuest, and I've got a few more on my wish list that are uh, planned to launch in early access themselves later this year as well as early next year. Here's the thing about RoboQuest, though, and the big reason I want to talk about it today. I adore Gunfire. I think it's got plenty of charm. The thing that really continued to let me down with that game, though, was its overall level design and gunplay. I just didn't find it that satisfying. RoboQuest, on the other hand, plays like fucking Doom Eternal or Destiny 2. <laughs> like, I'm so blown away by how good the gunplay is here, the audio work for the guns, the animations for the guns, just the overall shooting feel in this game is fantastic. Then toss in some pretty well-designed combat arenas, and you've got essentially a string of Doom-style combat arenas. They're just tied together to lead up to a boss in a sort of roguelike fashion, right? Where you're making your way through checkpoints and doors and like, okay, I'll go this way. This guy's going to give me access to this biome. There's even a little bit of like spelunky secrets in this game that I don't want to spoil. The game is doing a lot of different things. And while it is still very early on in terms of content, the core combat experience here, the core gunplay, and even a lot of the roguelite progression systems are already unbelievably solid. In some cases, they go beyond solid, and they're really good. Like, seriously, the gunplay and the movement stuff here, which includes power sliding, double jumping, and extremely tight and polished air controls, as well as some rails that you can grind on, are all exceptionally fun. And they all make for these really exciting, tense, and satisfying combat and arena engagements. Like, I can't get over how good it is. It's just one tight-knit little verticality induced arena after the next and while you'll start off the game playing relatively slow and taking your time the game very quickly ramps up to rewarding you for movement and for making use of the verticality of the environments and really bouncing around and constantly staying mobile uh, to dodge incoming damage you don't necessarily have to play the game like hyper fast like you're seeing me do here in a lot of this footage but i think the fact that i enjoy playing the game as quick as i'm playing it a lot in this footage is a testament to just how fun the movement the gunplay and you know the level design actually is this game is encouraging me to do me to do this sort of thing and more importantly it's rewarding me with a satisfying and very fun experience if I choose to do so. I mean, that's like my favorite thing about Titanfall 2. You don't necessarily have to constantly be flying around the place, especially in the game's multiplayer, but is it rewarding and extremely fun to do so? You bet your bottom it is, and it's very much the same case here with RoboQuest. On top of that, the game already has a huge variety of weapons. There are 40 weapons in the game, and they range from more like traditional rifles and sniper rifles and pistols to some pretty awesome stuff like a triple barrel automatic shotgun that has enough spread to take down a small house. You've got a disc launcher, you've got dual crossbows, you've got a gun that basically fires like small plasma suns, <laughs> energy based weapons, projectile based weapons, and they're all 
essentially chunked into their own little categories, which then ties into the game's in-game progression system, uh, which works in two ways. Cores, which are used to improve stats for specific weapon types, like assault weapons, demolition type weapons, uh, technology weapons, precision weapons, as well as an in-run leveling system that allows you to choose from a random selection of perks every time you level up. Leveling is done simply by collecting the cells of your fallen robot foes. So killing as many robots as you can and gathering those cells as quickly as possible before they dissipate is definitely a huge part of the experience. You will find yourself leveling faster and faster the more you play this game, which allows you to essentially hone more effective and more powerful builds as you get better at completing runs. It is really satisfying it is a simple way of handling the leveling system in the game but the perks that you can choose range from straight up just like health boosts stat boosts to actual perks that allow you to modify the way your weapons might perform in fact one of my favorite combinations uh, was the ability to take my assault style weapons with my two submachine guns put an electrical proc on them and then get a perk later on that allowed that electrical proc to chain between enemies. The end result was what you're seeing on screen, and it was very ridiculous and a very good time. The game isn't super heavy on elemental modifiers just yet. There's a lot of stuff that is obviously still very early days, but I think the implementations that are here, they work well, they make sense. It's easy to build out a character through the leveling system. Like it's not something you're really gonna rack your brain over. You can definitely have like a less good build versus a really good one. But again, at the end of the day, it works, it makes sense, and when you do put together something that's like kick-ass, it's actually kick-ass. You feel powerful, you feel like you've made a good build, and it's an enjoyable part of the experience. Now the cores, like I said, are stat boosters, and they come in pairs. So you might get a core that gives you plus two to precision and plus two to demolition. This is going to influence, obviously, one way or the other, how you build your loadout in run. You might decide, well, I've already got these cores for technology and for assault, so I'm gonna run a technology-based weapon and an assault weapon. I'm gonna run submachine guns and one of these energy weapons, or maybe something like the the disc launcher, the, the saw launcher, which has some technology to it. Some weapons will even have dual specs, so you could run technology or assault and they will be buffed one way or the other you also have ability that can roll on these particular cores so you might decide you've got three cores available by the way in a run you might decide that two of your cores will be focused on assault and tech and then your third core is going to be focused on assault and ability so you're going to get some increased stats for your abilities but you're also going to be increasing heavily your stats for your assault weapon and for your technology weapon this is very much a big part of making your way through a run in this game and as you get further in making your way to the second and currently finable boss in the game you'll go from plus one stat modifiers in your cores up to plus threes so you're going to be jumping up like 5 10% on a lot of these, so you'll be able to look at your stat screen and see, oh, I've got 40% boost to crit shot damage with precision weapons. You know, that's a huge difference. The weapons themselves don't scale level or damage wise on their own. Everything is tied to this core system instead. The thing you do get with your weapons is affixes. And you'll be able to actually improve your chances of affixes rolling on these weapons by upgrading things out of run. This is the sort of persistent progression part of the game through your base camp. You can go to your base camp, you can spend wrenches uh, to get things like artifacts, which will allow you to unlock things like a backpack. So you can have three weapons in a run. There's a jetpack so you can hover. You can unlock different abilities for your loadouts and for your different robos. So you can like bounce on people's heads. There's a decent chunk there. You'll definitely be able to blast through and unlock most of it in probably six or seven hours. Um, but it is a very good system, and it feels like everything you unlock there like has a purpose. It feels rewarding to gain access to those things. They do feel like straight-up persistent improvements that are going to let you be more effective on subsequent runs. All in all, it all just makes sense. It's intuitive. It all ties in on itself very well. And I think regardless of the loadout that you choose to play, the Guardian, the Recon, or the Engineer, they're all really satisfying. They do offer different play styles. You can build them out differently. But regardless of how you choose to build them out, the weapons that drop in-game are all pretty freaking fun. I only found maybe one or two weapons that I didn't personally enjoy. And it's not that they weren't powerful, I just didn't like 
what they offered. I wasn't a huge fan of their animations or the way they looked. The dual crossbows to me has never been something that I've liked. I'm kind of like whatever. I prefer like a single big crossbow or the regular uh, compound bow in this game. But like all the weapons kick ass and it's really easy to be halfway through a run and end up having like really good stat rolls for weapons you don't have and then deciding that you'll just pick up different weapons to go with those stat rolls or even vice versa and say hey these are the weapons I really like I really want to use the flamethrower and the dual subs on this round so I'm going to really try and harvest the necessary cores here there's a bit of RNG behind all of this obviously but it never feels like you totally get shafted like it always works one way or the other you can always flip things around and because all the weapons are really satisfying to use for the most part uh, you never feel like let down when you have to pick up a different set of weapons to go with the cores that you have to make sure you are as capable and as powerful as possible to defeat the boss at the end of a run it all just kind of works and I think a big part of it right now is that there's not a lot there in terms of like a fixes and you know stat bonuses it's all pretty tight knit and it's a, it's a confined package but I think that's just like a good part of the game's design right now is like there's not going to be a ton of different cores there doesn't need to be there's only so many different types of weapon damage in the game salt demolition technology precision so on and so forth the big thing is going to be the team expanding the affixes which is something that was just recently added to the game at the end of September. This is a system I'm particularly fond of. I like the way it handles itself. There's only 15 affixes right now, but the idea of having a lot more that could roll on a weapon, I think would be number one, just exciting to like have that RNG of what am I gonna get? Uh, and also the potential there to add more things that I think deal elemental damage. I think elemental damage is something that's really cool in this game, but it's rarely touched on. Uh, you only get opportunities to mess with it a few times throughout the course of a run while doing your actual robot level progression from collecting cells. I'd love to see more of that show up. I'd love to see more cohesion between the affixes and, again, the elemental types that you can decide to, to use while leveling up your robot during the course of those runs. It's just a very good little roguelite right now. I honestly cannot recommend it enough. It's just so fun to play. And it, even with the two bosses here, you've probably got 15 to 20 hours worth of gameplay experience. Again, depending on how you decide to play it, solo or co-op, there's a lot to make your way through here. It's really fun alone. It's really fun in co-op. Uh, it just works. Like It's just one of those games you jump into it and you're like, okay, this is all just really good better than i ever expected it to be so consider putting robo on your radar maybe you know follow it along while it's in early access development if you like supporting games like this and you know giving them the funding to make their way through early access i really cannot recommend this game enough whether you're a solo player looking to play it in two-player co-op it is simply a blast if you enjoy the combat that's offered by games like doom 2016 uh doom eternal you like the idea of these like tight-knit you know, movement focused combat arenas, then you're really going to enjoy the gunplay and the core combat experience that RoboQuest offers. And I think even if you're not a huge fan of like roguelite pro progression, the fact that you're pretty much playing a game where you just endlessly make your way through those sorts of combat arenas is going to override any sort of concerns you might have for the roguelite part of the game. It's an absolute joy. It's got a hell of a lot of charm. I love the art style. It's obviously something uh, that a lot of us are very familiar with. I love the onomatopoeia. So you can actually, you can turn that off if you want, but I don't know what you want to. You're like seeing like the taka 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 coming from like the assault rifle or the brr, brr, brr coming from the submachine guns is a really nice touch. Uh, there's onomatopoeia for a lot of stuff in the game. And I think it just, it just works, especially considering the game tells its cutscenes and its narrative through comic book cutscenes. It all blends together really well. It's a game with a hell of a lot of charm. Again, a very inconspicuous name. This is RoboQuest by Rise Up Studios. Check it out, folks. I'll have a link down in the description as well as the pinned comment. Huge shout out to everyone over on my Patreon who continues to support the work I do here on the channel. Uh, you guys have made it possible for me to pick up just out of the blue games like RoboQuest with the funding you give me over there and, you know, see what they're all about and then bring you a video like the one I brought you today. So hopefully in turn, you maybe check RoboQuest out. You enjoy it as much as I did. And best of luck to the team at Rise Up with the future development of this game. They've got a pretty stellar roadmap planned out. A big update every two months with a minor update every month, including potentially community feedback. I mean, the power slide mechanic in this game was added recently because the community wanted to see more movement options. And the devs were like, hey, this is the way we think this will work. Here's the first iteration of it. It's kind of rough. It works really well already, by the way. I think they're all a bit modest, which is probably a good thing.
Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Be awesome to one another. And I will see you all in the next one.